Welcome back to another episode of Casey Campbell's video. Campbell here with Great House. We are now joined by Cody Ware of Rick Ware Racing. Of course, has had some pretty good runs in both the Cup Series and in the Xfinity Series the last few weeks. Um, Cody, how are you, man? Uh, doing really good. Definitely uh, doing a lot better after a crazy, insane race in the rain on Saturday. So uh, just soaking it in and living on a high note right now. Yeah, how was racing in the rain? Uh, definitely exciting. You know, I've raced in the rain a couple times in sports cars between, you know, GT and prototypes, but that was my first time in the rain in a stock car. And as you'd expect, they, they don't uh, break and turn nearly as well when it's pouring down rain. So I uh, just was really, really patient out there in the first part of the race and kind of let things shake out and get, let people get a feel for how things were going to race. And I mean, based on our results, I think we played that race pretty well. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, coming out of the Roval, it's got to be uh, got to be good heading into the next few races. Um, look, but what are your plans for the next few weeks? Um, are we going to see you at all in the Xfinity Series or the Cup Series or, hey, maybe truck racing? I don't know. Yeah, I think um, – for sure, we're working on starting up our program for a full-time Ford and Xfinity in 21. So with that, we're going to try to get on track at Martinsville with uh, a sister chassis to the one we ran at the Roval and just kind of lay the foundation and groundwork down for our, our new Xfinity program. And I think that it's um, going to be really exciting. I think uh, we're going to be out there a lot more in the Cup Series and Xfinity Series again next year, kind of. Uh, picking and choosing the races that I think we can shine at. You know, had a really, really good day uh, this weekend and the weekend before at Talladega. And so really just want to build off the positive things, put myself in a good position on and off the racetrack to, um, you know, grow and learn and get valuable experience. And so I think we have a, a pretty good mentality going forward for the end of this year as well as 2021. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so talk about what, you know, you want what have you been so talk about what you've been doing this this kind of year because we hadn't seen you in a while yeah it's been um it's been slightly slow you know i think i think covid definitely slowed down a lot of my plans more so um because i was focused a lot on the road racing before covid hit we were uh, gonna be campaigning an audi r8 gt3 car in IMSA for the sprint races and obviously was coming off of my championship in the asian le mans series uh, racing over in you know, China, Malaysia, Thailand, Australia, and um, also won the entry to Le Mans. Unfortunately, with COVID and everything, we just couldn't um, financially justify running the 24 hours of Le Mans, even though we had secured an entry. So my plans got pretty, pretty jacked up with the whole virus situation. But um, coming back into the NASCAR fold, I think um, after having been out of a stock car for a full year, and coming out of Talladega with a top 20 and running respectable all day, as well as a hard fought seventh place finish in Xfinity, uh, gives me a lot of confidence coming back into NASCAR for next year, going tr trying to run a lot more than I have run even in the past. And so, um, still want to do some road racing, but you know, as I experienced this year, you know, uh, road racing got impacted a lot harder. Um, sponsorships a lot harder to keep when things start to fall apart. And so I think uh, coming back to the NASCAR fold and having the seat time and the experience to progress as a race car driver is going to be really important for next year. Yeah. Do you see yourself running full-time cup and full-time Xfinity or what do you want to do? It's, it's something that I've, I've always tried to do, you know, 2019, I was, I really thought we were going to try to run a full season. Um, unfortunately, uh, I deal with a lot of the depression and anxiety and last year, even running, I think I ended up running 15 or 16 cup races and a handful of Xfinity races. And um, it definitely took a toll on me. You know, I think um, I have a harder time keeping those things in more than some other, other, a lot of the other drivers, I think do a good job of maintaining their stress levels and anxiety during the race weekend. That's something that I'm still, Working with a psychiatrist and therapist, I was actually at a um, mind care uh, private practice for the past couple of weeks doing a therapy called Nexalin, which is kind of like a brainwave therapy treatment for uh, PTSD, anxiety, insomnia, depression, and a lot of things. And I've seen a major improvement 
since starting that a couple of weeks ago. And um, I'm confident that I'm going to be a better race car driver and, and manage some of the stress better than I have in the past. But I still think that, um, you know, I still have work to do on myself before I can honestly say that mentally I'm ready for a full season of cup because it's just, it's a, it's a big ticket. And I would like to be able to do that at some point in my career, but I don't want to get ahead of myself when I have a lot of positive things going on right now. And I think we can get there eventually. Okay, you know, obviously you mentioned the anxiety. That was the topic of conversation yesterday. Um, so one of the big, do you feel like, do you feel like you're getting better and do you think that NASCAR drivers are being, you know, more open about that kind of stuff? A hundred percent. I mean, it's something as simple as just Alex being able to talk to his crew and say, you know, hey, feeling anxious about the race, you know, that's something that I think kind of marks, you know, a turning point, kind of like when Bubba Wallace was a, one of the, you know, one of the first big names to really come out and speak out about uh, the mental health issues that he sometimes deals with. And I think the more things like that happen, it's going to not just spark the conversation, but it's going to normalize a lot of the things that people deal with. And I respect the hell out of it, even for something as small as just being able to admit that you're, you know, feeling anxious or you're stressed about, you know, the outcome of, a, of an event. And so um, it makes me happy to know that. And, you know, obviously to see a guy like that on that, on that platform, you know, moving over to the 48, you know, that uh, it's really good to see. Yeah. Um, all right, Cody, thank you so much uh, for talking with us and uh, good luck the next few weeks. And maybe we'll see you in a few weeks out on the track somewhere. Sounds good. Well, thanks for the time, Casey, and we'll talk to you later, buddy.